My name is Muriel Howden. I am the Executive Assistant and Senior Outreach Advisor for RTO ERO. I will be moderating today's session and providing an active offer for any participants who wish to ask questions or have information related in French. Throughout the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A chat box to submit your questions for the panelists. Bonjour et bienvenue à notre webinaire dont le sujet aujourd'hui est Pourquoi un régime d'assurance à partir de 65 ans Je suis Muriel Howden, adjointe de direction et conseillère en liaison à RTO ERO. Je serai la modératrice de notre session d'aujourd'hui et je vous invite à poser vos questions ou à partager vos commentaires en français dans la boîte de conversation questions et réponses afin de les soumettre à nos panélistes. Before we begin the webinar today, we would like to pay our respect to the Indigenous lands that connect us across Canada. I am speaking to you today from the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, which is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We acknowledge, recognize, and honor the ancestral traditional territories on which we live and work, and the contributions to all indigenous, indigenous peoples, to our communities and our nation. Je m'adresse à vous aujourd'hui du territoire traditionnel de nombreuses nations, incluant les peuples Mississauga de Crédit, Anishinaabek, Chippewa, Haudenosaunee et Wendat, qui abrite aujourd'hui de nombreux membres des peuples des Premières Nations, Inuit et Métis. Nous reconnaissons et honorons les territoires traditionnels ancestraux sur lesquels nous vivons et travaillons, ainsi que la contribution de tous les peuples autochtones à nos communautés et à notre nation. Merci. Thank you, miigwech. Thank you all for joining us today. So our speakers are John Thompson, Senior Vice President in National Sales and Business Development at Johnson Inc. and Stephen Wong, Director of Benefits at RTO ERO. Before we begin, I would like to remind you to submit your questions in English or in French using the Q&A box. If your question is directed to one panelist in particular, so to John or to Stephen, please include that in your question. The chat will not be monitored, so please ensure that your questions are entered through the Q&A feature. Je vous rappelle de soumettre vos questions en anglais ou en français dans la boîte à questions et réponses. Si votre question est destinée à l'un de nos panélistes en particulier, donc à John ou à Stephen, veuillez l'indiquer dans votre question. And now let's begin. Stephen and John, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as mentioned, my name is Stephen Wong, and you may or may not recognize that I myself am not yet retired. Um, to give you a bit of background, I've been proudly serving RTO ERO for over 10 years. Um, RTO ERO is a retiree association with over 81,000 members and ensuring nearly 100,000 lives. Um, at RTO ERO, my role includes alongside uh, working with the board of directors and benefits committee to manage the health and dental plan is to help our members through the retirement journey. It's to, for them to prepare for retirement and help them throughout retirement. So I am so privileged to have been a resource to help thousands transition into retirement and what we at RTO like to call their awesome years. So being retired means different things to different people. For some, it's not needing an alarm clock to wake up anymore. For others, it's pursuing a new hobby or, or career, or maybe go globe trotting around the world. Ultimately, in our working years, we are all working toward a long, healthy, and happy retirement. Now, while it's true that money can't just buy you happiness, finding yourselves without the means to maintain a certain lifestyle could hinder your retirement plans. So as an element of retirement, financial is a big part of it. So it's advisable to have a solid grasp of your budget and your spending plan and how to use your money and use your savings. Because retirement really does need a mental shift. It's not just shifting from 
contributing to RRSPs to now trying to figure out how to use your RRSPs, which you should be. Um, there are certain luxuries that we get while we're working, luxuries that we don't fully re recognize or appreciate until we retire. And this often includes insurance. So I mean, health insurance, life insurance, uh, critical illness, accidental death and dismemberment. Um, for many Canadians during their working years, they have access to this coverage, which may also be subsidized. Even if someone doesn't have coverage for these out-of-pocket expenses, um, the costs aren't too excessive during this stage of their life. Yet after retirement, we lose much of the insurance that we've grown accustomed to. Uh, for many, insurance options even in retirement are limited or completely non-existent. Now, let's talk about retirement planning a bit because I want to say what it is and what it is not. Retirement planning for health isn't sitting around thinking about all the worst case scenarios. Um, it's hard and it's not fun to do, especially if you're in good health at the moment. It's not very productive. Uh, retirement planning, again, isn't focusing on all the bad stuff that could happen. It's about having a plan for the unknown. Now, I don't want to depress anyone, but having really good health right now doesn't guarantee anyone good health in the future. Yet with that, many don't have contingencies for unexpected health emergencies. Now, for those of us that do have health issues, we are faced with a different issue. In fact, an Ipsos survey found that almost six in 10 Canadians believe that they'll have to delay the retirement date out of fear that they can't afford retirement health care. So this really is what insurance is for. Now, insurance takes many forms. In fact, the word insurance often has a certain connotation. I mean, we have car insurance and we try our best not to use it. Same thing with home insurance, uh, critical illness, accidental death and dismemberment, and life insurance. We all get it, we all have it, and we don't pray one day that we're gonna to have to use it. They are all very worthwhile because it gives us protections if something catastrophic were to happen. Now, health insurance is extremely unique. It is a benefit that you use ongoing. Um, it is there for common planned expenses like uh, maintenance medications, um, chiro chiropractic visits, dental cleanings, things of that sort. Also other aids that we need regularly like uh, CPAP masks, orthotics, maybe hearing aids to name a few examples. But there are other unexpected expenses as well, things that we are likely to need in the future. Things like uh, wrist splints, maybe a back brace, uh, dental treatments like fillings, extractions, or crowns, um, or maybe some expenditures including acute medications like uh, antibiotics or painkillers. But we also need insurance for those things that we can't see, and those often are catastrophic in nature or have catastrophic costs. I'm talking about those um, prosthetic limbs that could easily cost in the five figures, uh, mobility aids like a walker or a wheelchair or um, emergency service like uh, home nursing or hospital beds. These are the expenses that are really hard to foresee, um, especially since we don't want to go looking for them. Um, and I repeat that we don't want to go looking for these expenses, but we just need a plan for what could be those shady aspects of our retirement. It really is quite the paradox that for other types of insurance, we look not to use it, yet, yet for health insurance, there is a tendency to do some accounting as if you're trying to work on a balance sheet or, 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 or balance your books. To say it a different way, health and dental insurance is for your ongoing health care but it's also here for all of those things that we don't expect and just can't foresee and those worst case scenarios. There may be times where you use your benefit less and there may be times where the benefit will be used more or even come to your rescue. 
I mean, I recall a time where a new retiree just joined our plan and they traveled just within months of joining the plan. Then they had an unforeseen medical emergency where they got um, enormous um, hospital fees. Even though this new member just joined our plan, these costs were covered at 100%. Or another member who unfortunately got their leg amputated uh, and they needed a specialty leg prosthetic that cost over $50,000. And our plan approved them of that for that cost. And this is something that they're going to need for the rest of their life. So insurance really does give peace of mind that will be protected financially should something happen. Now we are lucky to live in a country with, great, with a great healthcare system, but government plans are unfortunately not as generous or comprehensive as people think. We have perks like we're able to walk into a doctor's office uh, and walk out without paying anything. We're able to get a blood test without even thinking about payment. Some provincial plans also provide a bit of support for some aids and appliances, but this coverage is very limited and only offered to a small number of items for a minimal amount and is not universal across provinces and territories. Now, the benefit that gets the most amount of attention is coverage for medications. Now, we all hope to not need uh, medications. We all want to limit the amount that we take as much as possible. Now, I'm not saying that we have it bad in Canada. In fact, we are very fortunate. But many government plans are not quite enough. Also, the coverage that you get is really reliant on the province that you live in. Canada currently doesn't have a unified national health care system. It consists of a patchwork of many provincial and territorial plans. And they try and provide access to as many Canadian citizens as possible. So these programs are often aimed at groups such as seniors, uh, low income individuals, and people with serious medical conditions. And most provinces offer some sort of catastrophic coverage that could supplement when the ability to afford a medication exceeds someone's ability to pay for it. Now, despite this healthcare system that we have, there are cost barriers to people um, not taking the medication. In fact, the Hoskins report, they do report that uh, 3 million Canadians say that they are not able to afford their prescription medications. 21% had public coverage, uh, but did not um, cover their cost enough. And one in five households had someone who did not take a prescribed medication due to its cost. So there is a real gap that exists. So talking about the different coverages in different provinces, um, here are some examples. In BC, uh, the coverage only kicks in after that resident meets a deductible based on their income or their family income. Uh, in Ontario, it typically kicks in once someone reaches the age of 65. And in Quebec, it is very unique where coverage depends on your age, but also if you have access to an employer plan. Now, Canada is the only developed country in the world that doesn't have a universal health care plan with universal drug coverage. So there's a major gap that health insurance helps fill. So some of the items that are not covered by government plans include things like some vaccinations especially those vaccines for travel, like uh, for hepatitis, uh, but even some routine vaccines like for shingles. Um, they only now cover Zostavax for certain age groups in Ontario, but there's no coverage for Shingrix. Um, now our plan does cover that, even if you ha have already gotten Zostavax, um, this is a type of vaccination that we cover. But also the uh, flu vaccine uh, in BC, that's not funded by the government, so private insurance if covered, does help fill that gap. Now, no government plan in Canada covers sexual or erectile dysfunction drugs, such as Viagra and Cialis. And these medications um, are some of the most commonly claimed items through our plan. Now, this is something that you hope to and maybe won't need in the future, but it's a good item to have within a retiree plan. 
And lastly, many would be shocked by how many medications are not covered by government plans. I mean, government plans, they cover some of the drugs available, uh, but not all. So this is what's called uh, as a formulary. So taking a look at this chart, if you take a look at the green bar on the left, these are all the medications available in Canada with a prescription that you can get from a pharmacy. The pink bar on the right, this depicts uh, the number of medications covered by most provincial plans. So as you can see here, there is a major gap. And if you've heard of medications such as Cialis, Dexalent, Jubilea, Nexium, Shingrix, uh, Visc injections, Viagra, or Victoza, it's because this is grabbed from our list of the 10 most popular uh, prescriptions from our group. That, and these are just examples of eight medications not covered by government formularies. So what I have intended to talk about today is why coverage is needed. I mean, the title says a lot because it's a question we get all the time. Do I need coverage after age 65? And this really leans on the notion that people expect the government to take care of them after that age. But as you can see here, um, there are many other parts of coverage um, to a health plan in addition to drugs, but also government plans may not fill that void as much as many people will think. They also really don't cover um, aspects of travel, which I'll now pass it off to John Thompson from Johnson Insurance uh, to talk more about. So John, over to you. Thank you very much, Stephen, and uh, thank you all for the opportunity to chat with you briefly about uh, travel insurance and the RTO plan. Um, Stephen, as you're in control of the presentation, maybe I'll just uh, ask you to flip forward there. Um, yes, so as mentioned, I'm a senior VP with, uh, with Johnson Insurance, uh, a partner with the RTO ERO in, in uh, designing and uh, and administering the benefit program for uh, retirees within the, the RTO ERO. And uh, just wanna have a, a chat with you today about uh, the um, requirements for travel insurance and some of the um, issues that face Canadians who, who travel abroad. So this first stat here is, is, is kind of amazing when you think about it, that only 40% of Canadians who voyage outside Canada buy travel insurance. And that was uh, conducted by a recent survey. And most Canadians or most travel by Canadians is south of the border into the US, which, and, and as we probably know, the, the US has the most expensive healthcare system in the, in the world. So if you were to break a leg or if you were to do something even more severe, like have um, a heart attack or something uh, that required a, a extensive hospital stay, it could be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and we've paid claims into the millions of dollars. So it's, it's a very important coverage that uh, obviously anybody who's traveling outside the, uh, the country should consider. Um, and also actually uh, interprovincial travel can, um, can cost uh, an individual some money as well because uh, some of the, as, uh, as Stephen, Stephen would have mentioned that the provincial plans vary as well. So interprovincial travel is also important for travel insurance. Uh, but we'll walk through some of these examples today and, and just give you a sense of how important travel insurance is. So Stephen, if I could ask you to go to the next slide. So travel insurance you know, it is usually top of mind for those who travel a lot, but for those who you know, uh, live close to the border, who might just travel over to do some shopping or to um, you know, do a day trip, uh, people may not even realize the risk that they take by entering the, uh, the U.S. and um, involved in a car accident, for example, without coverage. It could, you know, it, it could dramatically impact uh, people's finances. Um, travel insurance, you know, does cover uh, a lot of different things, um, you know, flight delays, lost luggage, cancellations, um, but of course, the most meaningful thing that, uh, that the right uh, travel insurance covers uh, is for medical, uh, medical emergencies and travel medical while you're uh, out of the country. Uh, and again, that, that staggering statistic that only 40% of Canadians actually acquire 
travel insurance while they're abroad is something that I'd like to educate you on today. So um, maybe next slide there, Stephen. So uh, when you consider what happened in the last 18 months with the pandemic, that um, you know the majority, uh, uh, the snowbirds who, who had left the country to, to winter abroad, uh, the prime minister, the government of Canada uh, issued a travel advisory uh, instructing people to get home. Um, we would have had uh, 11,000 COVID related claims in that first month in uh, getting people back to Canada who uh, hadn't planned to come back uh, in, in March of, of uh, last year. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, with the Canadian winter, most people plan to come back in late April, May. So therefore, um, making sure that uh, through um, trip interruption, we were able to look after those members who, uh, who, uh, who were caught out of the country who needed to get back in a timely fashion. Uh, that's uh, exactly what travel insurance is meant to cover. Um, and w when someone is, you know, when you're contemplating a trip and you're planning your trip and you're discussing um, with your family about uh, the details of travel insurance, it's obviously very important to understand the fine details. Some um, travel policies don't include travel medical. Some don't include trip interruption, for example. So it's, it's critical to understand um, the different variables in a, a particular insurance policy and, and what's covered versus what's not covered. And obviously, the, the broader the coverage, the more detailed the coverage, the, the better it is for you as a traveler to make sure that you have the, uh, the appropriate coverage. Uh, next slide, Stephen. Um, so as reference, not all insurance plans include, uh, you know, benefit plans include travel coverage. Um, it, travel is, is, is embedded in some uh, uh, benefit programs and not in others. Um, so if you're uh, an active uh, member of a plan today, it's obviously uh, 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 advisable to check and see if travel is covered. And if not, or even if it is covered but doesn't have a, a broad coverage, you can then go to the market to buy an individual plan, which is, uh, is more expensive than a group plan. If, if, some, if, a, if travel is embedded in a plan, you have the benefit of being a part of a uh, group buying power, you have the benefit of getting a more than likely a broader coverage base that would include things like uh, trip interruption, lost luggage, a more ex extensive uh, travel medical coverage, for example. So, uh, but it's always good to ask those questions as you're planning a trip um, and making sure that the, uh, the coverage is there. Um, the you know it's uh, things like medical evacu evacuation for example may not be covered uh, repatriation back to Canada may not be covered so th these are some of the questions that uh, that you may uh, want to ask and make sure that you're well versed on uh, as you make your plans uh, next slide please um, as mentioned in embedded travel plans help support all members and the, and the power you know the purchasing power of a large group like the RTO ERO with uh, tens of thousands of members um, can go you know we, we can go to the market on their behalf and negotiate uh, very strong terms and uh, economical pricing to make sure that the buying power of tens of thousands of people, is reflected in the coverage and in the price that uh, that members would pay. Um, you know, individual uh, plans, for example, um, uh, age and a person a person's uh, current health uh, are requirements within the application process. Uh, embedded programs, um, uh, uh, prior health, for example, is not as big a concern uh, as it is for individual plans. So it's good for people to understand the difference there. Um, medical questionnaires, for example, are not required in, uh, in most embedded plans because again, the purchasing power of the, of the larger group. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as I would have mentioned, age and health status impact on the individual plans, but um, prior embedded plans 
take in that uh, that large buying power that a group like the size of the RTO ERO would have. Um, next slide. So in, in any example, it's important to read the fine print, whether it is embedded or whether it is an individual plan. But you know, when it's in an embedded plan, you can rest assured that uh, the vast majority of things like medical emergencies, repatriation, um, trip cancellation, unforeseen medical costs, by and large, are uh, are covered if if it is a broad plan, much like the RTO ERO plan is. Individual plans are, for the most part, can be uh, bespoke. You can decide to uh, not include trip uh, trip can uh, trip cancellation or trip interruption. Uh, it, particularly if you're only concerned about the medical aspect of it. But the limits for like under, under the RTO plan, for example, um, $10 million worth of coverage uh, in the embedded plan is very rare. If, if you're buying an individual plan, you may get a million or two million. Um, the embedded plan provides much more deeper coverage, broader coverage as a result of the buying power that, uh, that exists. Next slide, Stephen, please. So as I would have mentioned, you know, a, a lot can happen while you travel. Travel, And when you consider, um, you know, U.S. markets like uh, Florida or um, Arizona, Nevada, California, Hawaii, where most Canadians like to travel in the winter months, those are amongst some of the most expensive um, hospital uh, groups in the US. A, uh, you know, as, as Stephen would have mentioned, when, when we go to a hospital or to a clinic in Canada, you know, we don't even think about uh, what the cost of a broken arm or a blood test or any of those items would cost. In the US, um, it's astronomical. Uh, like the, the detailed billing that we would get once a a member has to um, have a, a hospital stay for even the uh, less serious type of incidents would be five and six, seven pages of incremental cost for every single, uh, even that little, uh, the pill uh, dispenser, those little plastic cups uh, get billed out in, uh, by the American hospitals and a, a uh, what you would think would cost five or seven thousand for a quick hospital visit may actually cost upwards of seventy five or eighty thousand dollars. It's a um, it, we we have to remember in Canada it's a it's a it's a social cost that uh, we all uh, we all pay for down there. Uh, the hospitals are for profit, and um, the costs are completely different, and the uh, and hence why insurance is incredibly important. Uh, next slide. So as I mentioned, the cost of medical emergencies can be, um, you know, very, very expensive, extended hospital stays, procedures, medical evacu evacuations, uh, medical referrals, meals, accommodations, you know, with um, if you're traveling with a spouse or a loved one, um, of course, um, they need to be um, stay as long as 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 you're um, uh, in hospital being looked after. Uh, so these claims costs can rise quickly. And as I mentioned, we're quite used to play, paying claims in the tens of thousands of dollars and have paid claims, you know, into the millions as a result of um, uh, severe injuries where people can't be repatriated to Canada. They have to stay in a, a, the U.S. hospital system until they're healthy enough to travel. So it is um, quite an expensive undertaking. And, and just a couple of quick comments on the strength, strength of the RTO ERO, uh, ERO plan. Um, embedded plan provides increased member benefits, superior product with more benefits and higher maximums. I would have mentioned the 10 million in emergency medical benefit, which again is, is one of the highest, if not the highest um, benefit in Canada. Uh, higher benefit maximums on hospital accommodations, dental accidents, return of, return of your vehicle if you've, if you've driven um to the south and you've had a significant event occur and you can't uh, drive it back your insurance will um, will bring it back for you um, meals and accommodations and uh, 
and obviously worst case scenario uh, return of uh, of the deceased member if if uh, if that such happens um more benefits broader coverage including uh, medical evacuation loss prescriptions medical referrals uh, baggage insurance which i would have mentioned al uh, alternate transportation uh, business expenses and a return of a of a pet um, better product and uh, customer journey, uh, supplemental uh, travel plans up to 212 days for trips longer. So under the current plan, there's uh, 93 days, but you can buy up to uh, 212 days with guaranteed acceptance, um, no medical questionnaire. Um, obviously on everybody's mind is COVID-19 coverage, uh, which we provide uh, members of uh, RTO ERO coverage for uh, complications arising from COVID-19 vaccination uh, received at destination um, also was included. The RTO plan provides members with deeper benefits across a broad range of coverages. And final slide. And uh, finally, the, the, the plan has a commitment from the RTO ETR, uh, ETR, ERO, sorry, um, uh, long-standing partners like Johnson supporting member advocacy and the long-term viability and affordability of the plan. Uh, we want to ensure RTO members have a bespoke service experience and we deliver on our promises and we continue to support members uh, day in, day out. So uh, just obviously a very short overview of, of travel insurance and what an embedded plan can look like. Um, and delighted to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much, um, John and Stephen, for so many insightful tips and information about health and travel insurance. So I see that we have received actually a lot of questions. So this is very exciting, and we're going to get to as many of them as we can today. I just need to do a little reminder because I, 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 I know we did say it at the beginning, for, but for those who may have missed the information. So this session is recorded, so no worries if you missed the beginning and it will be shared. Um, and you can submit your questions in English or French using the Q&A box. Um, and um, make sure that you use the Q&A because the chat is actually not monitored. Um, and if your question is directed to one panelist in particular, so John or Stephen, please include that in your question. So un petit rappel que cette session est enregistrée et elle sera partagée et que vous pouvez soumettre vos questions en anglais ou en français dans la boîte à questions et réponses. Euh, ne les mettez pas dans la boîte chat parce qu'elle n'est pas surveillée. Donc, utilisez la boîte Q&A, questions et réponses. Et si votre question est destinée à l'un de nos panélistes en particulier, euh, donc à John ou à Stephen, euh, indiquez-le dans votre question également. Okay, alors, nous, we have a lot of questions that have come. A big thank you to everyone. I think I'm going to send the first one to Stephen. It's a question from Ina. And here's Ina's question. Dry eye treatments are expensive. Is there any plan to cover these in the future? Steven? Great question. And I'll speak to it on two fronts because we do have a lot of RTO ERO members here, but this is actually just meant for uh, Canadians and the broader retirement base because not all people do have benefits. Now, after the age of 65, the government does cover in Ontario and um, other provinces as well, standard eye exams. And this is actually a good example as to how um, private health and dental insurance is really beneficial because uh, plans like this, they do cover the cost for eye treatment, eye examinations. Um, eye treatments are a bit different because it all depends on what's being done. So for dry eye treatments, I interpret this as um, getting some eye drops that are needed for the eyes. Some are over the counter and some are prescription. Uh, to somewhat dabble in a question that's asked a little bit later, sorry to jump ahead, uh, Muriel, uh, but the RTO ERO plan, for example, we do cover all prescription medication. When I say prescription medication, it is any medication that requires a prescription from a doctor to obtain. That doesn't mean that a doctor can just write like Advil or standard reactant on a script and is paid for. What I mean by that is if it's only medication that is behind the counter that you need a prescription for, our plan does cover it. Um, there are a lot of individual questions about certain medications or certain treatments. Um, as much as I'd like to answer those there, 
This is the reason why we hire Johnson Insurance to be our claims adjudicator, to answer these one-off questions, but also they are the main resource to actually know exactly what is covered 100% of the time. For some of those questions, I really would recommend that you call and ask. Um, not all your questions have to be asked and answered here today. We are actually available anytime. Uh, my team and I, the team at Johnson, to answer some of those one-off questions. So for the eye treatment, again, just to get back to the main question asked, if it is a prescription drug or a prescription um, uh, eye drop, it would be covered. If it is an over-the-counter item, it is not covered under the plan. That's great, Stephen. Thank you so much. I'll get to Janet's question, but I see that you've basically responded to Christian's question. So I think uh, about the eyes, um, the eye exam. So um, I, it seems that it's changing as of September 1st. Um, so she had a question about this change as well, if you have anything to say about that. Yeah, so that's a somewhat different question. And that is um, two fronts. It's a coverage question, but it's also an advocacy question. So I'll talk to the coverage uh, question primarily. Um, right now, it is very much in flux. Uh, for those who are not aware, as of September 1st in Ontario, uh, the uh, optometrists have threatened to stop doing standard eye exams for any OHIP covered individuals. So that's younger folk and folk over the age of 65. Their main concern is that they are not being compensated enough for the items being done because the reimbursement from OHIP hasn't changed for decades. Um, so they are now saying that they are just going to stop doing the treatment altogether. Now, what further complicates this whole ordeal is that they are a part of, I believe it's the Commitment to the Future of uh, Medical Care Act, which does dictate that they can't just pull out of OHIP, but it also means that they can't bill privately to the member or submit to insurance privately to do these services. So they're somewhat handcuffed in that they actually aren't allowed to bill separately and they're not allowed to submit it to insurers. Um, how we are going to respond, it's being looked at by not just us, but our consultants at Johnson, the CLHIA, which is an overseeing body, just to see how things continue to progress in the coming weeks. Um, if there is an announcement to make to our members, we'll definitely make it to the broader base. But as for now, it's uh, premature to speculate how things will unfold over the coming weeks. Great, thank you, Stephen. Actually, the next one is for you and the one after will definitely be for John. Um, Stephen, it's a question from Janet. Can I, um, can I peek upon this plan anytime after retirement? Talking about the RTO ERO plan, um, you can join anytime. The main caveat is that when you pick up benefits right when you retire or within 60 days of when you retire, you're guaranteed acceptance. If you try and apply after that, you're still welcome, but I mean, and this isn't just RTO. Most insurance plans when joining, um, if you apply on a later date without having continuous coverage, you would be medically underwritten, which means a medical questionnaire. And this is just done to really maintain the whole, the whole concept of insurance. I mean, if we had it wide open that anyone can just buy hospital coverage when they got that $25,000 expense, it really defeats the purpose of insurance and everyone else will be subsidizing that person's day. So all the medical underwriting is, is just to make sure that um, you're not purchasing it for something immediate or apparent. So the answer is yes, you could apply anytime. But for those of you not eligible for RTO, not a part of the broader education sector, um, you'd have to take a look at that insurer for their guidelines. Most groups do allow um, uh, move from a group in insurance plan to another group insurance plan or to any other plan with guaranteed acceptance, as long as it's at the point of um, the plan termination. Wonderful. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so, John, the next question is, uh, uh, is for you. It's from Mervyn. And the question is, does RTO ERO provide travel insurance for travel in the U.S. at this time? We do, and, and that was one of the um, critical things that we had to do in our last uh, uh, renewal. Uh, uh, the reinsurance requirements were, were um, with, with COVID being such a significant issue, we made sure that we had the uh, proper reinsurance to cover um, uh, Canadians who were going to go to the U.S. 
and made sure that we had all of the uh, appropriate reinsurance in place that if uh, members wanted to go during this um, unprecedented time that they did have coverage. And um, I just want to make one point there. I do see one question that I, but most of my discussion was on US tra uh, travel. And uh, out of country travel is for anywhere you go globally, right? But I, I just made yeah, the, the US as a, an example because that has the most expensive healthcare system in the world. But we pay claims, we pay claims all over the world. Um, Australia, India, China, in, you name it. We've, um, our, uh, our clients, uh, our, uh, our retirees that we partner with uh, travel the world and we're, we uh, are part, we uh, have a, a global partner that has uh, health networks everywhere to uh, to pay claims and to make sure that members are looked after in the event that uh, something does go uh, does go wrong from a medical standpoint. Thank you, Jen. Such an important point, especially as people are starting slowly to travel again around exactly. the world. Thank you. Um, next one, maybe for you, Stephen. Um, are incont uh, incontinence supplies covered after retirement? So I suspect the question means within the plan, but. Absolutely, and I'll speak to RTO ERO. Yes, mm -hmm. there is. Um, this is actually the type of question that I'm seeing a lot of in the Q&A. So just to address some of these matters, the best resource isn't actually necessarily asking me right now. It's actually just to get in touch with our claims payer at Johnson. A lot of these specific questions can be asked, but if ever you're at home a bit bored because you can't do much, um, we do have a great booklet that goes over everything that is covered. Uh, you would have received a hard copy, but I'm sorry, I'm just gonna flip to another screen for just one moment. If you don't have it available, you can always access it on our main webpage. It's really easy to do. If you go into resources and, oh, sorry, insurance plan updates, here you'll be able to view and review our entire insurance booklet. Uh, we are um, unique in that we make it available to the public because we pride ourselves on a very transparent plan that anyone can view and access. This is great, Stephen. So rtoero.ca slash resources, correct? Yeah. They go to the okay. resources, then the insurance portion, but a lot of people should have already received a hard copy a few years back. Okay, merci beaucoup. Thank you. So rtoero.ca ressources. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. So the next question came from Joanne and it came in French. Um, so I'm, it's actually for John. I'm going to read it as it came, uh, John, in French first, and then I will translate it um, for uh, our auditors. So the question from Joanne is, je suis, uh, je suis assuré avec RTO Hero. Alors, si je comprends bien, le coût de mon assurance ne changera pas avec mon âge. Par exemple, quand j'aurai 70 ans, si je voyage, je serai couverte comme je le suis présentement à 55 ans et le coût de mon voyage, uh, de mon assurance voyage n'augmentera pas. So, uh, Joanne is saying, I am insured currently with RTO ERO. So, if I understand properly, the cost of my insurance will not change with my age. For example, when I will be 70 years old, if I travel, I will be covered just as I am today at 55 years old, and the cost of my insurance will not uh, increase. Is it correct? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, Richard Harrison might be on the line as well. I'm not as familiar if there's tiered rating for, uh, for your age, but the way I guess an embedded product works is that um the uh, program is done on a on a group rating basis so if you were to go out to the individual market and buy an individual policy at 70 oh i see that um no uh, the answer no rated tiered so that I, I guess that means that no it doesn't go up in price from 55 to 70. Uh, but if you were to buy an individual policy uh, and outside of an embedded like the rto ero you would see as you age, you would see the price go up dramatically. So uh, thanks, uh, Christine, for answering that for me quickly online there. Um, I actually see uh, Richard from uh, Johnson Insurance is here. Richard, if you want to add, uh, add a word, you're welcome to. Thanks very much, um, Muriel and, uh, and everyone. Um, just wanted to uh, just to reinforce John's point that um, that the um, the 93 day plan does not come with any differentiation in price by age. 
Um, however, the supplemental plan, so for trips up to 212 days where um, we're needed by, uh, by folks, that is rated by age. But to go back to John's point earlier, and this is really important for you to understand that there's no medical evidence that's, that's required for that supplemental portion. And that's really unique in the marketplace. And, uh, and you should understand that. Thanks, Miriam. Okay. If I could add just one more thing to that. I mean, this not to talk about the RTO plan too much, but this really shows the strength and it really answers the root of the question that was asked on the first slide. Do I need coverage? after age 65? And the answer is absolutely yes, especially if you do want to continue to travel. Because a lot of the public plans or plans that you can access outside, they do rate it not only based on your age, but your health status. So as you want to travel later in your retirement, the cost will just go up and up and up to the point where a single premium for travel could exceed the overall premium for RTO's entire package. So as our members do advance in age, um, again, the premium is the same for all of our members, regardless of their health and age and health status. So the answer is yes, it will be the same as anyone, even if you want to travel. Uh, we have people traveling in their uh, 80s, 90s plus. So um, just wanted to add that, that point. That, that's wonderful. Thank you, um, uh, John, Richard, and Stephen, actually, uh, for answering so well um, Joanne's question. So the next one actually is still with travel. So we're going to stay with you, John, maybe Richard. Um, but the, Susan's question is, where could I find an itemized list of variables that might be included in a travel plan? Uh, what is not included in our travel insurance uh, that can be purchased additionally? So, and, and that person, um, Susan is uh, retired and is an RTO member, of course. She has the, in the RTO insurance. Yeah. My, my sense would be in that same booklet that, uh, that Stephen would have referenced would give uh, a lot of um, pertinent information on the coverage limits, what's included. And again, it's, it's a very broad, uh, deep um, uh, set of benefits. But uh, if there's anything that you're curious about that's not in there, um, we, we can certainly uh, do that over the phone by, with one of our representatives. Thank you, John. Yeah, so we'll, we'll keep repeating and we'll, we'll yeah. put it on this presentation when it's posted, rtoero.ca slash resource, making sure that, and, and also understanding that the RTOERO benefits team and the, um, the Johnson insurance team are always, yeah. always there to reply to your question. Um, so the next question is from Theodora. Um, it's still about travel, so I'll send it to you, John. Is the COVID um, covered in your travel plan? Uh, or members can buy additional coverage when um, they plan to travel, when we plan to travel. So yeah, I'm yeah, no, no. So, so we, we, we did make sure from a reinsurance standpoint that we, we did have that coverage available to members. So it is embedded in our coverage. And uh, Rich, I just want to uh, pass it over to you if there's any more detail that you want to add to that. Uh, no, John, you, I think you, you, you've, you, you've got it. But um, yeah. certainly, um, and I think just, just to explain a term too, um, reinsurance is actually insurance that insurers buy to protect themselves uh, and to protect you from catastrophic loss. So that in other words, um, premium rates don't rise exponentially when we see a situation like what happened with COVID last year with 11,000 claims and, and the kind of situation that we had to work through uh, on your behalf with, uh, with RTO, ERO, your benefits committee and your board, um, it's really important that, um, that your insurer has that underlying level of insurance themselves to make sure that rate stays stable. It is, yeah, to Rich's point, it's a very prudent thing to make sure that, um, you know, if we're accepting that risk uh, of members traveling in this unprecedented time, that uh, we're, you know, the financial capability to make sure that the, the insurance can afford, the insurance plan can afford to pay that many claims. And to Rich's point, last year, 11,000, if uh, COVID could, uh, could be here for hopefully not that long, but uh, make sure that the financial resources are there to pay the claims. Very well. Um, so Kimberly's question is actually two in one. I think you've responded to the first one, but I will let you judge. 
Um, but the second one is an interesting one. So Kimberly's questions are, uh, are there certain medications that are not covered by travel insurance? And the second follow up question is, if you are on a new medication, is there a three months waiting period to ensure that you do not have any side effects? John, maybe for you? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask my dear friend Rich to take a, yeah. a cut at that one. Yeah, all good. Um, so there's um, there, there's a 90 day medical stability uh, requirement that um, that predates your your um, your trip date. So um, in other words, you can you can be under treatment uh, for a particular condition as long as it's uh, as long as it's controlled. Um, so uh, to answer your, to answer your question, um, you you could have a change in medication. Um, but that change in medication doesn't necessarily indicate that you're not stable for the, for the condition. So um, if, if you do have a, a specific question, though, regarding your, uh, your, your situation, suggest that you call our admin team at 18 Spadina Road, and, uh, and they'd be happy to, uh, to walk through that uh, particular situation with you. Um, hope that helps. If I could just... Uh, yeah, just add uh, just one more thing to there, just uh, as an addendum. Um, so yeah, our and again, uh, just to echo what was said earlier, just make sure that you check your own policy because this is RTO specific. Uh, but for RTO ERO for, for medical emergencies, um, if I mean our plan is quite unique, it's actually kind of a Cadillac of plans uh, compared to what's out there, where if you do have something that could be. Um, seen as an instability, like a change in medication for a new diagnosis, because sometimes a brand new medication is as a result of a new diagnosis. That could result in some concern for that one diagnosis. But our plan is set in such a way where if you got a new medication because you have a heart condition, but you go somewhere and you break your hand, um, that medical emergency had nothing to do with what you just got diagnosed for. So that would be completely covered. And just to echo what Richard just said, we do have a pretty good change in medication coverage, where if you did have a medication and you were either changed to a slightly new one or a generic version of it, or uh, it was changed due to an improvement in your health condition, that would definitely not disqualify, disqualify you from coverage. Um, you still have full travel coverage. Great. Thank you very much. Um, there's a question from Nadine, but I think it was, anyway, I will let you talk um, to it, John, because I know you did mention about that. Um, so Nadine is saying that you, you've spoken a lot about the US travel, does it apply um, to Europe as well? So I'll, I'll let you reiterate um, that for yes. sure. Yeah, 100%. It's um, I, again. I just use the U.S. as an example because of the uh, the extreme cost in the U.S. versus other markets. But um, I, you know, uh, cruises, Europe, uh, Asia, uh, all as uh, global travel is covered 100%. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm just going to go down. There's a there's a question I would like actually for this question to call um, uh, the the chair of the board, Rich Prophet, and our CEO Jim Greve. Um, and I think um, maybe collectively with Stephen, um, I will ask the question. It came in French, so I will go first in French um, and we'll translate it. So the question is, quelle est la position de RTO ERO sur un programme d'assurance médicament pan canadien? So what is RTO ERO's position on a Canada-wide pharmacare program? So over to you, Rich, Jim, Stephen. Okay. Thanks very much, Muriel. Our position on a national pharma, pharma care program is that we heartily endorse uh, such a thing because it's imperative that we implement a, na a system health insurance coverage that provides people with access to necessary prescription drugs. And the most effective and efficient and cost saving method is to create a national plan that covers everyone the way that Medicare does for hospital care and doctor services. And it's I'm not gonna say ironic, but in Canada, we've had public hospital insurance since 1957 and public insurance for, for physicians since 1966. And it's extremely unfortunate that there's not been a large scale national health initiative since that time, 1966 being the last time. Yes, we hardly endorse a national Pharmacare program. 
Ariel, I would just add uh, one, one quick comment um, to Rich's very eloquent description of why and how we are supporting uh, national pharma care strategy. But, you know, we have three major advocacy issues and we're advocating these uh, nationally. We're advocating them in every province and every territory. And probably the most prominent of those uh, is our senior strategy. We're trying to make sure that as a great country or an aspiring great country, we need to have a senior strategy. And that, that is something that's woefully missing in Canada. And the pharma care is a significant part of that. So we have a senior strategy booklet. You can't see it terribly well because of the um, blurring, but uh, if you look on our website and we will put the website in um, when we send the recording of this out, you can find our advocacy papers there and we are strongly doing that and having good impact. Thanks. And, and yeah, further to ahead, that, Rich. Ariel, is that this would save Canadians approximately five to $10 billion if this were to be implemented. And uh, as I said, then that can be used for other, other healthcare services in hospitals, et cetera. So it's extremely wide ranging beneficial to have a national pharma care program. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Rich Prophet and Jim Grape for jumping in today. This is wonderful. Um, the next question is actually about flying home. So maybe I'll send it to John and then uh, John, I'll let you decide um, who re responds. But if you are overseas and you get a positive test, so you can't fly home, are any benefits provided such as hotel, food, et cetera? Um, yeah, I'll take a stab at it first and I'll just make sure that uh, Rich tells me that I'm correct. Uh, yes, so, so COVID is covered. So in the event that you're refused um, airline travel because you're um, tested positive, uh, your uh, your plan would cover your accommodations up until you're um, uh, hopefully test negative and and are uh, and then suitable to return home. So Rich, uh, please tell me that I was correct. Uh, that's my understanding, John. Perfect. Thank you so much. So um, in kind of the same vein, does RTO Euro cover, maybe that's for you, um, Stephen, or still traveling though, but um, does RTO Euro cover PRC testing, both departing, departing and returning to Canada? I can take that. I'm sure John and Richard could too, but I'll take a stab at it. Um, the plan does not cover that, uh, mainly because I mean, the plan is there for emergency. If you do contract COVID, if you have some symptoms, things of that sort to see if you do have it. The PCR test that's required for travel is more administrative in nature, just to actually return home or actually fly to a destination. It's not to treat for something for a medical ailment. So since it's administrative in nature to actually travel is not covered under the plan. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So the next question came for John. So I'll start with you, John, but although it's very related to health insurance, so I'm sure Stephen will add to it. Um, so can you please clarify regarding medication? John, I noticed, oops, I think the question is gone. I lost the question. I am so sorry. Um, it was the question was actually, I, if I recall properly, that our plan goes over and beyond. Um, what is offered by the government. And I think the amount was something like uh, $4,300 um, uh, of coverage. Do you have any more precision about this and what the plan offers more? Oh, here it is. Thank you so much. I could, I so probably, oh. Yeah, you can take the question. Yeah, so I'll speak to Ontario first. Uh, and I believe it's how the government plan works with RTO ERO. So um, we work with it in several ways. So for Ontario, there's a $100 deductible for those Ontario drug benefit medications, which we do reimburse for. For other provinces, it will vary. Like for BC, um, a lot of it has a family or the individual deductibles will reimburse up until that deductible is met. And, but then after that point, the government plan takes over anyways. Um, in BC, all you need to do is pay for a small dispensing fee. And in Ontario, you're left with either a 411 or a 611 fee. Now for that fee, that is a dispensing fee and most retirement plans are plan included, don't reimburse for dispensing fees. So uh, we would coordinate for any amount that isn't covered under that plan, uh, just not dispensing fees. Thank you. And, and actually thank you for bringing, um, you know, precisions related to provincial 
um, status. Um, I'll actually send Linda's question to you as well, Stephen. Um, is there any future plan to cover the cost of psychotherapy sessions, especially knowing the emotional effects of COVID? Um, great question. And I would have to double check, but actually as of a few years back, we started covering social workers and psychotherapy or psychotherapists under the plans. So I believe it's already covered. Um, so um, we would have to double check that. Uh, but our plan is quite unique where we hear the feedback from our members, which is why we don't want to just stop the conversation here. If you feel strongly that certain items should be considered under the, under the plan, uh, let myself or my team know, because what we do is we work with Johnson, the, their consulting team, to determine what the potential usage and uh, claims payout will be. Our plan is owned, managed, and all the funds are controlled by RTO ERO. So our benefits committee in tandem with the board of directors will do a, few, a full review of all of these items to see if it's something that could be included. However, as most of you know, most plans don't change every single year. I mean, think back to when you were working, if you are retired now or your plan right now, plans don't usually change every single year because um, we've already designed it to meet the needs of the majority of our members and we will continue to do, do so. But um, since we are a member-led organization, your voice does matter. So we'll take uh, every single suggestion into consideration. Fantastic. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to add to what Stephen had to say. In, in our uh, insurance plan booklet, it does state that uh, physiotherapists and psychotherapists are covered uh, for that. And, and most importantly, it does not require the approval of a doctor. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Thank you so much for making that point, Rich. Very appreciated. Um, this is great. I actually will send the, the next one, to, um, Alison's question to Stephen as well. Um, it, it may be of interest. We're talking about the plan not always changing, but people's personal situation do change. And it's a good example of that. So I am getting divorced and I'm covered under the OPSU plan as a spouse. And I'm still, uh, am I still allowed to transfer my health extended coverage to the RTOERO plan immediately to have continuing coverage? I am 71 years old. Absolutely, yes. So that's what was being said earlier about joining the plan. If you're coming off a group insurance plan like the OPSU plan, um, as long as you enroll within 60 days, and again, not to talk about too many other circumstances, but we do have spouses retiring. We have, um, I mean, the thing about divorce, about uh, retirement is that you're there with your partner, they're 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we do see some divorces as well, uh, but also we have unfortunate deaths as well. So if you are covered under a plan, whatever your situation may be, if your plan terminates for any reason, whether it be a retirement, divorce, or uh, death, you can join RTO's ERO's plan with guaranteed acceptance. Do you hear this, Alison? Welcome to RTO. Wonderful, thank you, Stephen. Um, okay, questions from George. I'll send it to you as well, Stephen. Um, at the age of 65, is there an option for a plan that tops off the provincial government or the provincial plan at a lower premium? Uh, great question. So this is kind of the question about different flexible options or some may refer to it as tiers. At this point, no, because what we do is we crunch the data on an annual basis. And um, there is, I mentioned earlier, a tendency to focus so much on drugs and what is or is not covered as of 65. But what we also see is there being a higher incidence of travel emergencies at an advanced age, more hospital beds, more wheelchairs, more walkers, more CPAP machines, hearing aids. So while we do see the whole uh, drug experience somewhat going down, not as much as some people think after age 65. Benefit plans, again, are just so much more than just that one benefit itself. So it's something that we monitor, we look at the data just to make sure that our plan is fair and equitable. But at this point, no, we don't have different options for after age 65. Okay, thank you, Stephen. So I'll send the next question to John and, and maybe Richard. Um, this is, I'll read it in French as it came uh, first. It's a question from Yasmin, and then I will translate it for you. So, quels sont les pays qui ne couvrent pas les soins médicaux? What are the countries that do not cover um, medical, medical health 
um, uh, uh, needs? It, or is there such a country? If there is a travel advisory, like, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, Syria, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 if there's, you know, military conflict or whatever, um, and there is a travel advisory, uh, coverage would be null and void for that, right? So, um, and, you know, uh, if, for example, there's, I think at one time there was, you know, um, uh, certain parts of, of um, you know, other countries in the Middle East where there was a travel advisory. So obviously, uh, once there is one issued by the government of Canada, um, all types of travel insurance then uh, don't provide coverage for Canadians to go to those uh, particular countries. Very well. Thank you very much, John. So I, I need to tell you, we're down to the last um, 10 minutes of this wonderful session. Obviously, so many questions. This is incredible. Um, so we'll take as many, a few more, as many as we can in the time that we are allowed it today. Um, so Lynn's question is actually for Stephen. Um, I will read it in French as it came and translated. So the question is, est-ce que le plan d'assurance inclut une assurance vie? Does the um, insurance plan include uh, a life insurance. Stephen? Uh, no, this plan does not offer life insurance. Um, so the suggestion here is to search the market for it. Uh, Johnson does offer uh, guaranteed life insurance and short-term life insurance to our members. So uh, this is something that you can look into, uh, but that's a product that you need to source uh, separately because um, the plan that our members buy into is uh, purely health and dental. And just uh, for a little take too, uh, for life insurance, it usually is rated based on you and your health status, but also just to make sure everyone's aware, uh, through our partners at Johnson, um, home and auto insurance is off also available and you can get a discount by being an RTO member, whether or not you're retired or not. Great, great, great clarification. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so the next question maybe is for John and the question from Margaret is, are COVID tests abroad? Covered. Uh, no, so yeah, uh, that came up earlier, and, and the right. um, and unfortunately they're not. As Stephen would have mentioned, that's more of a uh, administrative item. It's not an emergency item that would come up um, under uh, for travel insurance. So no, that they, they'd be excluded. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we have a question here from Christine. And um, so Christine's question, um, at, probably for you, uh, Stephen, if I was to join uh, once I hit 70 years of age, would there be a medical questionnaire? Yeah, so to echo earlier, it depends on your situation. If you are coming from a plan to a plan, you are guaranteed acceptance. For extended healthcare or hospital, if you are without a plan and you want to join, uh, we welcome you to uh, go through the application process where there will be a short questionnaire. Um, age doesn't really matter. Health status is uh, what we're looking at. Uh, for dental, it is a bit unique where all of our members are guaranteed um, to um, um, a guaranteed acceptance for a dental plan. The only caveat is, again, just to make sure that people just don't buy it, use it up and uh, leave the plan is that there will be a limit of $500 for the first 12 months. Uh, but then after that, the plan will be the same as it is for everyone. Wonderful. Thank you, Stephen. John, I will send the next one to you. So it's from Marilyn. Um, you can uh, you cover cancellation ins insurance uh, for $6,000, but many trips are costing more than that. Do you offer a supplemental insurance for the cost over $6,000? Uh, Rich, that's probably best for you to uh, answer. Um, thanks. Uh, good, good question. Um, because yes, we've um, we've we've heard of this from uh, from members, but uh, but at present, we um, the the six thousand dollars is uh, is the maximum, which um, which actually matches up with um, with many many programs on the trip cancellation interruption limit side. But um, good good question. Thanks for that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And next question from uh, Janine. Uh, so it's on medication. I'll, I'll probably send that to you, Stephen. Uh, I'm retired with Johnson and Johnson presently covers 80% of medication. When um, I turn 65, will the government cover the remaining 20%? Great question. Just a little bit of um, 
<laughs> the way the question is asked, just for clarity, we do partner with Johnson. They have been serving us great for over 30 years. Uh, just a little bit of clarification on the plan itself, though. Um, this is an RTO ERO plan. We own, manage, and operate the plan. Uh, we're very satisfied with Johnson to be our claims adjudicator, uh, our administrator, and our consultant. So um, it's more of a question if RTO would cover that or what the coverage is there. Um, the answer is a bit different in that um, once you turn 65, the government plan then becomes a first payer. So government will pay first. And if there is any type of coverage to be offered, so for example, in Ontario, every single August, you will need to satisfy a $100 deductible. So that amount that's billed over and above or that the government plan doesn't cover at that point, we would cover the 80% there. Uh, I will kind of jump to Quebec there as well, because there is a monthly co-insurance and a monthly amount that needs to be met. That amount will be covered under the plan. And same thing for uh, BC, um, if there is out-of-pocket expenditures, because, I mean, not to over-assume, but pensioners, which educators tend to be, tend to be in the higher deductible bracket in BC. For those items, we would pay um, our amount if it isn't being funded by uh, the BC Fair Farmer Care Plan. Fantastic, thank you. So here's the thing, we have lots of questions and it's amazing. Um, I'm gonna take one more because um, our CEO, Jim Grieve, will do the uh, last remarks um, after this one. So I wanna pass on the mic to him. So I will take Suzanne's question. Um, I'll send it to John first, but I suspect the three of you have something to say about Suzanne's question. Please re-explain reinsurance and explain embedded since you keep using that term. So, so embedded is a group uh, group purchasing power. So it's in the travel insurance is a part of the greater uh, benefit program that uh, RTO ERO provide their membership. Uh, so travel insurance is embedded or it's a part of um, the greater plan. Um, individual coverage is where you apply uh, on your own uh, outside of the group and you pay individual rates and get individual coverage. So um, embedded, of course, is it, it's group. You get the power of the group buying power, uh, the power of a broader coverage and a um, you know uh, better pricing. So it's um, embedded more often than not is, is the way to go. I also wanted to clarify one thing I mentioned earlier that I think the, one of the questions on COVID coverage. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so yes, um, our, the, the plan does uh, uh, provide coverage for travel medical. So if you are in the US or in Europe or anywhere uh, globally and you contract COVID and you have to go to the hospital and you have a hospital stay, all of that is looked after. However, if the government of Canada issues another travel advisory and um, uh, issues every Canadian back to Canada, the reinsurance market is not providing a uh, trip cancellation uh, for COVID. So, so that's the only exclusion is trip cancellation or trip interruption, sorry, that if, uh, if, if Canadians are ordered home, uh, that is not provided in the marketplace right now. But travel medical is covered. Fantastic. Muriel, sure? I, 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 I hate to do this. May I answer one question that I think is really prevalent because I saw it come up and has come up several times during the pandemic. Anything for you, okay. Stephen. Just one more. It's about the nursing benefit as well as a convalescent care benefit. Um, especially since hospitals are a bit inundated and people are getting discharged earlier and earlier. And just because someone's being discharged doesn't mean that they still don't need care. So within our hospital plan, there is a convalescent care benefit where if you're being discharged from a hospital after overnight stay, you are provided from services for a personal support worker at your home for those activities for daily living, whether it be cleaning, toileting, ambulating, things of that sort. Uh, but the, for the question about the nursing benefit, that is a bit different. We do cover nursing care at home. Uh, more information is in the booklet, but those are four items that pretty much only a nurse can do, whether it be uh, changing dressings, catheter work, things of that sort, or um, treating wounds. Um, those are what's covered under the nursing benefit um, separate from the hospital plan. So my apologies, but that's all that come up and it's becoming a lot during the pandemic. 
That is totally fine, Stephen. And here's Jim for the last words. Just a reminder, I've been asked by our little special team in the back to for all the questions that were asked and we didn't have the time to respond, please send them to our wonderful benefits team and insurance team. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Muriel. did a great job. Uh, a, a sincere thanks to Rich Prophet, the chair of the board, for uh, being a significant part of this, as always. And then a great thanks to John Thompson from Johnson. A pleasure, as always, John. And uh, I never get tired of hearing our own director of the, uh, benefits, and that's Stephen Wong. He has honed this to perfection, I think. And uh, great help from Richard Harrison. Thank you so much, Richard, for being um, a great consultant uh, on today's um, on today's webinar. So the webinar said, why do you need a benefits plan after age 65? I believe asked and answered. Well done today. Your questions are amazing. And for those that we didn't get to, please send them in and we'll make sure that we get to those. You know, here we are midsummer, prime reading time. And we have 260 of you who joined this great webinar. And um, by reading, I'm thinking of a, a great series that many, many people read, and that's uh, Lee Child's uh, Jack Reacher series. There are about 20 of those books. Jack Reacher always has hope for the best, plan for the worst. And that's what this is all about. Whether it's RTO, ERO insurance, and we hope it is, and we've answered lots of those questions today, or insurance that you're shopping for elsewhere if you can't qualify to be an RTO, ERO member, make sure that you're getting the kind of coverage you'll need in retirement for a long time into retirement. Uh, and I know that we can do that with RTO. You can do that in many other places, but as a not-for-profit, we're here to welcome those who are in the education sector. So a great thank you. We have recorded this session and in within two weeks, you'll be getting all the participants. We'll get a, a URL that will take you directly to this. So you can see it again. Uh, it will be posted on our website. Uh, you can feel free to take the link and share it with your friends and family and let them look in on uh, some of the great experience you've just had. Um, and I know that uh, we're looking forward to additional webinars coming up. We have one coming up on ageism and intersectionality. Wow, big topic related to diversity, equity, and inclusion on August the 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Join us again. Thanks so much to our speakers again, and uh, good day. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank you all. Bye-bye.